Good evening, YouTubers. I'm wearing my flying suit today. My wife's been talking. This is what I wear when I go flying. So I look dashing and brave. And um, this is how I used to fly at Shoreham. You should stand up and show them how it is. Yeah. It is a very, very nice flying suit. That actually. Now, most of the pilots in the UK wear the green ones, the NATO ones, you know, from, from the UK because they're army surplus and they're there. They're actually made of Nomex, which is flame it's not flame proof it's flame retardant so and you have to have your sleeves all rolled down at all times because if the thing does catch fire it gives you a chance to get out without getting horribly burned although it does get hot quite quickly but it's got flame retardant it delays um, it a little. yeah yeah for sure and um, because everyone was wearing green ones i mean i myself bought green ones at because they've got all convenient pockets some, and yes, pens you did and have things. Some green ones, I did. I've still got some green ones somewhere. Where did you get this one from? Uh, I, I, I got my original one, the green, the grey one, from one of the surplus stores. But this particular one. This particular one, I bought this online. Oh, right, from another okay. surplus stores. Yeah, this is actually a proper German Air Force. Because, <laughs> as I recall, you used to approach. Um, RAF pilots that visited Shoreham and offer them money for their uniform. No, I bought I bought a they knife. I bought a no. knife off this captain. It was he, he parked up outside. He had a gazelle helicopter, and the weather was shit, so they were waiting to cross the channel. So they were just sitting around in a bar, and I clocked his knife. He had a knife because the, the, the British pilots have a knife on the, on the leg down here somewhere, and there uh, I clocked it. I wanted that. And I, anyway, I did a deal with him. I bought it off him for 30 quid. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I wanted to be different because I'm not one of these people who likes to have everything the and same as everyone else. you had a Baron. Uh, I had a Baron logo. on. on and everybody called him the Baron. Because it was called the Baron Flying Club. It was. So people used to call me the Baron. That's how I got the name. I didn't and make it up myself. They were always trying to put him out of business. Oh, yeah. And he wrote in chalk on the side of his Land Rover. Baron Bus Company back in business, which is um, a tip to Business as usual. Business as usual, which is a tip Yeah, they're always to trying to close me down. You know, it's nothing new being trying to, people trying Doug, to close me down. The great Douglas Barder, who is a hero. Yeah. Douglas is your he's, hero. He's a hero of mine, Douglas, yeah. But he's a hero of yours for totally different reasons, because you admire his flying ability. Whereas for me, I'm an admirer of him because he was a double amputee who would not give up. I admire his flying ability with no legs, for sure. I mean, that takes a lot of doing. Flying a Spitfire, I wouldn't like to fly a Spitfire. And I've mm. got two legs. They're a death, well, they're not a death trap. They're just very, very difficult to take off mm. and land because the narrow undercarriage and the crosswinds and things. Oof. Tail um, ground looping, yeah. Nightmare. When you were at Shoreham, you used to go fly to Goodwood, didn't you? Quite all the frequently. time, all the time, yeah. Yeah, and, and what's the other one? Um, uh, Lid, Lid's the other way. Not only Lid, you used to go to another one. Where... Goodwood, Sandown, Benbridge, they're all sorts of locally ones. But you can't the, go the, north because Gatwick's right there, isn't it? There was another one um, where Douglas has got a statue. It's not Goodwood. Uh, he's got one. Tangmere. Of Tangmere. He's got a yeah. statue at Goodwood, I think, but also Tangmere. Yeah, but yeah. Tangmere is not there anymore. I mean, it's, is it's, not? It's, no, they've, they've, they've dug it up. It's all gone. Oh, it's no. all gone. It's all gone. You wouldn't recognise it anymore. It was a huge crucifix from the sky. You couldn't miss it. But all the runways have been dug up. It's been given back oh. to the farmers. And there's, there's very Wheel. little left. North Wheeled is North a Wheel. marvellous. North Wheeled um, has been there. Very big runway. And it's kind of like a roller coaster. There's, there's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking off. Yeah, uh, and they've still got that kind of massive hangar. Anderson North Old's still there. The North Old's they, good. I've never been to North Old. I've been, I've been to North Old. Um, what was the one in Kent called? It's near Leeds Castle. Headcorn. Um, Headcorn. Yeah. Lashenden. That was a weird little one. Yeah. 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 So some... yes. Oh, mentioned for my friend Sandra. Oh yes. Hello, Sandra. Yes, a delivery Prost. delivery note arrived today. Um, and how it works in Gibraltar is we get a delivery note and then we have to wait 24 hours and then go and collect it. So very yeah, exciting. Yeah. Customs usually open it and decide if yeah. you owe them money or not. And yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Formality. And I'm on the I'm on the German beer. Look, I'm into German stuff. I'm not. Um, 
You're not a traitor. Are you? I'm not a traitor. No, I'm a huge fan of German stuff. You know, I I love Audis. When we went to the Cannes Film Brun Festival, and oh, we went no. to Monaco, didn't we? And we went. We, we we hired an Audi from Nice Airport. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. Fantastic. What a gorgeous car. It absolutely, absolutely fabulous. That wiped out about 50% yeah. of our holiday budget. And when we went to Monaco, um, they had some kind of car show going on outside the palace. And it was really, really strange because one of them had the word Hesketh written all over it. I suppose from Lord Hesketh. From or the Hesketh Formula One it? team. It was, a, um, it was a Renault 5. Or, that's or right. The like one that, where yeah. the gear stick comes out of the dashboard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we, of course, had to have our pictures taken with that. Yeah, and we're showing people the photo of our wedding, quote, the swords. You know, the crossed over swords. I've got the wedding album, but obviously the where boat, is it? it? It's in the living room, the saloon. Um, but the boat leaks, and some of the photographs have been a bit damaged. Yeah. But I'll have to. You'll have to get that out and take some pictures because absolutely um, very difficult to get photographs Terrible. of a black velvet wedding coat you really do it justice you got it out the other day you were going to show it on your live i, I did but it, the lighting just wasn't good enough and it's been sun bleached it's kind of gone a dark dark blood red now um but but it was black velvet to start yeah, off with it was a good black because there's different types of black yeah blue yeah. blacks red blacks that, that one was a red black and my mother made it she made graham's she did um sort of prince charming well i wanted i wanted the sort of um and she made outfits for both Sammy and Ben when they identical, were pretty much. Yeah, but they were tiny. Yeah, and all the people with swords. Yeah, they all brought their own swords, and almost every single person had a samurai that, sword. They were all villains, except for Bruce Jordan. Yeah, that's true. The guy right at the back on the on the on the right. Bruce, Bruce was marvellous. He was the guy in the boatyard who kept me yeah. spurred on. He kept criticising me. And, and in the end, I got the boat done, and it was all thanks to him. And then he said, I've only been teasing you for your own good. Yeah. Bless him. Did I you know, know those samurai swords are banned now in the UK? You can't well, have a curved sword anymore, not well, even to yeah, hang on the wall. Because people go and uh, cut other people, and that's terrible. But you can, you can have one if it's a real antique. So you're okay to go and kill someone with a real antique, but you can't do it with an imitation well, in China. Well, I suppose the theory is that a real antique is ex inordinately expensive and then the owner will <sighs> have it more protected than, a, for example, a cheap replica. Yeah, I suppose Which so. would it's, be more largely more, available. Yeah. But, I, mean, I mean, we we used to buy Samurai swords for, for about 20 quid, 30 quid. Oh, you had two made of, in China. You had two of them, didn't you? I, I had two. You I, I, had a, I had a full size one and, and, and the, 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 the medium size one. I like the medium size one best because it's it's like it's more handleable. It's not my thing. I don't like any of that sort of stuff. No. It's all very squeamish. In fact, we're being tortured with the Godfather trilogy on the telly. Yeah, That's no. almost, normally we have uh, Murdoch mysteries. Followed by Midsummer Murders, followed by Endeavour, and I love all those shows. But now they've taken murder, them all murder, 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 murder. Yeah, they're but glorifying they're crime, aren't they? Um, no, they're not. They're not. And I've got to make this clear because when our kids were little, uh, they were aware that we disapproved of certain police officers. But we don't disapprove of the police. We're both actually huge quite supporters. responsible people huge supporters of the police police officers who actually aren't lazy do mm. their job put in the effort and get the bad guy right because we've had bad experiences what we are not fans of are corrupt lying bent police officers nobody is darling nobody is and i can assure you we're not alone in that my course. number one hero is uh, peter Falk. Columbo, because it's a, it's a fantasy. It's the He's a fictitious character. He's not he, real. Peace are not really like that. I know, well, I know. That's the shame. But I love Peter <sighs> Folk because he gets the bad guy. I love Midsummer Murders because they get the bad guy. I love the Murdoch Mysteries because it's um, a play on Victorian CSI. I love all the CSI crime shows because they get the bad guy. And I love Endeavour because generally he gets the bad guy. <sighs> What I don't like are uh, real, the real police who just can't be fucking asked to look into it. I mean, look at my case. Oh, 
Julian's a poor, innocent little arsonist who's been to prison lots of times. Oh, Fiona. I used to call him. I used prison. to call him Cinderella. Was it Cinderella? Yeah. Yeah, it was Cinderella because he set fire to his own chip shop. His family owned the chip shop. I'm not going to say the guy's name, okay? But he set fire to his family chip shop for the insurance, and instead of just leaving the fat on on high and waiting for it to burst into flames, he used petrol. So there's a bit of suspicious, a bit a bit of an arson issue going on there, and. Uh, Apparently, a sixteen-year-old girl yeah, was injured as well. He bungled that. it. He bungled it and set fire to himself as well as a chip shop, and he ran off in flames. Yeah, but the thing—he well, left a shoot a burning trainer behind. I've got to emphasise: you met him in jail. And yeah. Did you know any of that when you met him? No, no. He just said he was in for fraud. Yeah. He he done he done. I in all the months I was with him, eighteen yeah. months, eighteen long, god awful months. I didn't know anything about that. It wasn't until after Steve Skerritt had arrested us both that he said, look, there's something I've got. To, there's a couple of things I've got to tell you. And one was the arson. And the other one was that. Um, he went QE, didn't he, on, on all his color He basically told me that he was hiding from the people who had organized the fraud and that he'd gone Q, what they call QE. Obviously be king's the, evidence now, wouldn't it? It'll be king's evidence now, but he's gone. It's when you grass on all your all your coke and co accused and he was basically to get out of it. a copper's pet, which yeah. means they've got a license to commit crime, including arson, attempted murder, stalking. They're characters that have information, and so the police decide that the lesser of the two yeah. evils is to allow this piece of shit to live amongst society in order to garner information from really dangerous people they like look me after and Graham. their grasses. Um, They're and informers. Steve, do you know what it is with Steve? The reason we lost contact with him was because in the end, when the famous actress, the, the, um, it all hit the shit with Julian. He was all over the newspapers. I mean, if you dig enough, you'll find his real name and who he is. <coughs> the shit hit the fan because he'd been ri ripping off all these dying children dying of cancer. Uh, him and his family had been living it up. And, um, well, she was just, this famous actress was just as livid as me that Skerritt never did his job in the first place. And I basically said on a public forum, we used to have forums, remember, this is before Facebook and social media. We had forums and I went on this forum called Prune. P P R U N E, and me and this actress were there comparing notes. Mm. And I said, and Steve Skerritt was on it, and Thomas was on it. We were all on it. It was for pilots forum for getting jobs um, in the airlines. That's sort of I thing. said, did you know, Steve, that if you had done your job properly and followed up on Julian years ago, he wouldn't have ripped off all these families with their children dying of cancer, and I was thrown off. The mods on the, the forum said, oh, you're crazy lady making shit up about a poor guy who's dying of cancer. The guy's still... Uh, He's still dying of cancer 20 years later. ripping people off to this day. Yeah. Don't care. He don't care. And I've never had any problems with the police since then. Since I met Graham, actually. Never had any problem. That's because I'm a law-abiding chap now. You know, I'm all rehabilitated up under the Criminal Justice Act 1991. Well, you were never, <laughs> you were never what I would call a, a habitual villain. No, I'm not. Never. And Thomas, no, Thomas has gone on to reoffend. So Julian's gone on to reoffend. Thomas has gone on to reoffend. There were three of us, three suspects in the Britain's Most Wanted, and I've never gone on to reoffend. I even said that to Steve, and that's how me and Steve fell out. Because he was like, no, 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 you were the bad guy, Fiona. You were the bad guy. And in the end, I said, do you know what, mate? Fuck off. I don't want to talk to you anymore. And that's how we fell out. And I haven't spoken to him in about 10, 12, 12, 13 years. He always liked you more than me anyway. He always said, Did he? yeah, he always used to say, oh, I can't reason with her, Graham. You're the nice one out of the two. And he's absolutely right about that, actually. He said, she's so aggressive. She always has a go at me. We met up with him in a five-star hotel several times in, in a cafe, you know, not like a bedroom or anything like that. <laughs> in, did. in the lounge, it was a he thistle, wasn't it, in Brighton? Yeah, he said, Graham, I don't know how you live with her. She's so difficult, so argumentative. 
can be. You, you've seen hints of it, haven't you? I said, yes, I'm innocent and you say I'm guilty. Of course, we're never going to agree. Never. No. So well, there you go. It's going dark, darling. It is. And, and kitty, kitty. The evening is drawings were closed and I've got to charge my glass with more beer. My cat. And hopefully tomorrow, tomorrow. Is another day. We're going to have a German night. What? She's got no idea, Sandra. None whatsoever. As to the what? contents of the package. I haven't told her. Honestly, I haven't told her what's in that package. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite enough for now, I think. <sighs> Good night, and may your God go with you. Auf Wiedersehen. Hasta mañana, as they say in Spain. <laughs>